um, as we move into our morning, the Lexio Sundays, I love these. I love the, the, I love the time where, where I'm not preaching and we're just in the Word together and listening to our Heavenly Dad speak to us about um, Himself, about who we are. And, um, and I'm in, we're, Summer and I, are, we're intentional about this because you need to hear this from me. And you need to hear this, even this is from the, the, the staff. I don't want our church to be so dependent on hearing a preacher preach to strengthen their faith. Your relationship with Christ is your relationship with Christ. And so my responsibility, our responsibility, is to equip you to walk out your faith. Now that may seem like a no-brainer, but it's amazing the patches of life that people arrive at, and it, it, always, it almost always comes down to a, a lack of discipline. I mean, I would, some of I were youth pastors for 10 years, and whenever somebody's life went sideways or haywire, we could ask the basic questions. Have you been in the Word? <laughs> no. Have you been praying? No. Just the basics. I'm not saying that it's, the Bible's a, a lucky rabbit's foot. That's not what I'm saying. But without question, there is spiritual transformation that takes place when you're in the Word. Um, it's, it, it says this of itself. It, it is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It has the ability to divide, to divide bone and marrow joints and all of that kind of stuff, ligaments, paraphrasing, of course, but it does a, a very precise work in our life, in our mind, in our heart, and if we're not using this precise tool in our life, we shouldn't be surprised when we start getting stressed about things, when we start making very poor decisions, when we find ourselves in just a less than spectacular season of life. It usually comes down to we've either lost the heart of devotions, or we've just stopped doing them. I'm just saying, because you can even be in the Bible and it still not do a transforming work. I know a lot of people that know a lot about the Bible, but they don't look like Jesus. They can outquote me, but I just don't see Jesus when I look in their eyes. And that might be like, you might be like, well, that's so judgmental. Yeah, uh, it is. Because I, I, I want to be like Jesus, and I want, tell, I want somebody to tell me if I'm not like Jesus. Equip. I love this word. We talked about this briefly yesterday at Square One, which, by the way, was such a fun gathering of people. Um, but, but at the gathering, we're talking about equipping. The body of believers is, is, is all about being equipped for the work of the ministry. And, and I love the word equip because it means to reset a broken bone. It's a medical term. And so there is a resetting of a broken bone so that it can resume in its original purpose and function. And so as we are in the Word, there are all sorts of fractured parts of our lives that are being reset so that we can go out and continue to be the people that God has called us to be. Period. So that's what this Sunday is about. We're going to get in the Word together. A few, a few more points that I want to say. Um, a, a different way of, of saying what I've already said. A lot of times we approach Scripture strictly from, and we're so American with this, we just approach Scripture from an informational standpoint. I, gotta, I want to get the information out of it and, and apply it. it. It goes deeper than that. We want the Scripture not to just be informational, but to be transformational. And so we don't want to get too educational or scholastic in these moments. This is about relationship, not getting an A on your paper type of a moment. And so um, that's why we do this. We've done different reading plans our entire life, but it wasn't until we were introduced to the, the discipline of Lexio Divina where you actually are silent, where you slow down where you're slowly repetitive over a small section of Scripture, it has transformed our walk with Christ. And can I let you in on a secret? Because there's statements that, that are made to me, and I just want you to see that I'm okay being transparent about myself. Y'all, I love to preach. I do. I love to just to pick apart Scripture and teach it. And, and I'm as amazed at the teaching 
as the next person. I just, I just love it. And when, when statements are made about the teaching or the preaching, and, oh, man, you're just speaking right to my heart, to those comments, I would say this. The only reason that you feel what you feel and you get what you get is directly connected to the fact that I do Lexio Divina on a regular basis. That's it. I love the Word. I love the Word because I'm in the Word, and I love it because I allow it to transform my life. And so if, if you see Jesus, which I hope that you do throughout the course of my life, I hope that when you see this thing up here, I don't know why I just about said beast, anyways, <laughs> that's just how I see myself, either Shrek or the beast, I don't know. When you look up here, that when you look in my eyes, that you see more of the life of Christ than you see the life of Josh. And I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm just letting the cat out of the bag. The only reason that that has happened is because I am allowing the Word of God to transform my life. It's not rocket science. It's not like this hidden ministerial society that gets transformed by the Word. No, this is for y'all. It's for all of us. So there's our setup for the morning. Um, I, I do have a, a, a group of people that are going to join me up on the stage. Um, only one of them are not a group leader. Um, yes, thank you, Todd. I love our team that we work with. So um, if you did not get a sheet that has Lexio Divina on it, hold it, for those of you that do have it, hold it up. And for those of you that don't have it, like kind of wave your hand like, I need one. I need one. Okay, for those of you that are kind of like doing this thing, spirit fingers, um, you'll, you'll have somebody making their way to you to get that in your hands. I want to invite the, the team or the panel to come on up here with me. We have Guy, Rep, Michael Waters, Cal Cody. Hannah Janelli and Nick Janko that are going to be uh, joining me up here. We still have some more down here in the front uh, section here, so we, I'm hoping that we don't run out. They will make their way to you, I promise. Um, go ahead and start turning to 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to set this up for us. Um, I'm going to spell out the, the different parts of Lexio Divina so that we're all on the same page. I didn't do this in the first service, um, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. There are some specifics to this, to this discipline, and I have it in list form up on the screen, but here are the elements to Lexio Divina. Silence, read, reflect, respond, rest, Resolve. Now, that might seem like an overwhelming list, but once you get into the, the practice of it, it's very, very refreshing. Just like learning something new, if you've not done this before, there might be a little bit of strangeness or unfamiliarity with it. That's because you're unfamiliar with it. You haven't done it yet. And so um, don't be intimidated by that which you don't know. So the silence portion and the rest are, are perhaps the most challenging for us because we live in such a busy world. Over the course of time, life continues to get more and more busy. And I feel like it's such a, like we will always be saying that. I said it when I was a youth pastor. Oh, you students, you, you guys are dealing with stuff that I never dealt with. True. I'm still saying that 12 years since then. The people, we're still dealing with new things. And it comes at such unexpected angles and whatnot. The silence and the rest goes against the grain of every aspect of our life. Cars are faster. Technology is faster. We get so impatient when something doesn't show up on our screen, on our phone, forgetting the fact that it goes into outer space first, <laughs> right? Like, come on, load! I mean, it's traveling through space, this silence and this resting forces us to do something that is so unnatural for us. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and speak to it. I'm just going to be completely honest. Some people are afraid of the silence because of two things. They're afraid of what they're going to hear God say. Or they're afraid that their ears are too clogged up to hear something. And they're like, I must be a sinner that God doesn't want anything to do with. And so you have this, these weird fears that can play into our mind, which this is also intentional. I feel like I'm all over the place. 
we are doing this to address happy new fears. We need to have a fear of being reverent in front of the Word so that it transforms our life. I'm also being intentional about this because we're, we're highlighting groups. If you're not in a group, get in a group. If you're like, well, that's just not me, make it you. Okay? People that don't do life with other people get weird. That's my theological stance. So don't get weird on us. Get relational and let people speak into your life. And it might sting a little bit, but it's for your good. All right, so get in a group. Silence, read, reflect, respond, rest, resolve. We're going to walk through that this morning together. You, I'm going to, y'all listen to me. Y'all are going to hear God today. You're going to hear the voice of God today through his word. So don't, don't try to force anything. You just, just chill. We're going to have a relaxing, good time. Don't forget we're in his house. It's his rules. So we're going to abide by his, his, his culture and his house. Um, where we are picking up in the reading is, is a prophet by the name of Elijah. He did some pretty spectacular things throughout the course of his life. One of them being... Um, there was this kind of this uh, puffing of chest, like whose God is who? Who has the stronger God? And so there is this scene where all like several hundred false prophets are calling at their God to burn up their sacrifice, and nothing's happening. And Elijah's mocking them, like, "Hey, maybe he's out to go to the bathroom." Like he legit says that, and just totally slamming their God in front of this whole assembly. Well, he saturates his sacrifice with all kinds of water, just like loads and loads of water. Then he calls on God to do it, to, to burn up the sacrifice, and it just licks everything up, just burns it all up. So you think this crazy dynamic thing happens. Those false prophets turn to God, but then Elijah kills all of them. Kind of a weird scene, right? Um, then the um, a queen at that time, Jezebel, she says, all right, Elijah, May the gods deal with me ever so severely if, if by this time you are not like one of them, one of the other prophets that you killed. So she was out for him. He runs. He stops to take a nap. He wakes up because an angel of God touches him, has a meal prepared for him. He goes back to sleep. The angel of God wakes him up again. He eats again. And this is, in the, this is the part of the story that we're going to pick up. This moment, right on the heels of this amazing, dramatic, traumatic scene with the sacrifices and everything. I'm going, and this is, we're going to enter into Lexio Divina right now. I'm going to pray us in, and then um, we're going to be silent for about two minutes. During that time, my, my encouragement for all of us would be to Picture ourselves on a love seat with God. Psalm 25, we taught on it two weeks ago. The secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. Secret counsel in the Hebrew language was the imagery of a couch. That's what we want today. We want the secret counsel of the Lord. I'm going to pray. We're going to be quiet. Picture yourself on a couch with your heavenly dad. So, Father, here we are. In your house, we are all going to read the word together. We want to hear your voice. What we're saying right now is that we are your children. We have ears that want to hear. And so, we expect you to speak. It's our hope and it's our anticipation that you're going to speak to us this morning. So, we invite you to do that through your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, I want to invite everybody to, if you're there already, great. I need to get there. Turn to 1 Kings. That's Old Testament. 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm going to ask Miss Hannah if you'll do the first reading. Now, every, every part of Lexio is about slowing down. So even in the way that we read, sometimes we can get in the scripture and we just read, read really fast. But there's even a pace to the way that we read that is important. This first pass through, we're going to make three passes through, through this text. Um, we're reading verses 8 through 13. This first one, all we're l- listening for is a word or a verse that's, that is highlighted as we're, as we're listening to it. What pops out to you as, as we read it through the first time? All right, Hannah, go ahead. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Okay, I want to give give us about a minute, two minutes, and whatever that word or that phrase is that was standing out to you, go ahead and write that down. This next time that we go through, as you're listening, ask, have a dialogue with God and, and al- allow him to speak into what is going on in life right now that you need to hear that word or phrase. This one, this portion right here, really every step is a little bit challenging if we're not used to this. Um, w- we, have to, we have to be um, disciplined at giving honest assessments of our life, being aware of what all is going on around us, how we're feeling, um, our our emotions, all of those sort of things. I know guys just love to land on those points, but we've got to be cued in to what we're feeling and what we're sensing in in our life and what's going on. And so this the second pass through, what's going on in life right now that you need to hear that word or that verse. Um, I'm going to ask Guy if you'll read the second time through, verses 8 through 13. I'm going to read in the NIV. Okay, that just sounded like our heavenly dad. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't mean to. So he got up and ate and drank, 
Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I'm going to give a few minutes to respond to this and just writing down what's going on in life right now. I'm cutting short some of y'all's time. Some of you might be more um, verbal with your pen than others. Um, but we're going to go into our third reading. And this, this one is our response to God. And so as we're listening to 
the scripture is being read again. This is our response to him. I find that most of my uh, re- reply to him is one of thankfulness and gratitude for speaking through his word. Thank you for showing me this. Thank you for speaking your truth to this portion or this aspect of my life. And so it's, it's just a simple, I say simple, but it's, it's a stretch for some. I remember it being a stretch for me too of, of just writing a conversation between yourself and God. Um, and so we're going to go through one more time. And after we get done with the reading, just begin that dialogue. Okay, I'm going to read this last uh, pass through. This is the Holman uh, Christian Study Bible. So here we go. So he got up, ate, and drank. Then on the strength from that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb. The mountain of God is where he went. He entered a cave there and spent the night. Then the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah. He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, but the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are looking for me to take my life. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing at the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a voice, a soft whisper, When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Go ahead and begin that dialogue.
what we're going to do now is um, there's a the group of guys that meet on Tuesday mornings. We'll, we'll do this occasionally um, where we'll say the Lord's Prayer and then we'll go back into a longer, more extended period of, of silence, somewhere around five minutes. And uh, we're not going to do the Lord's Prayer today, but we are. I'm going to pray a short prayer and then we're going to enter into another two to three minutes of silence. And, and during that time, listen for God to finish this sentence. And you can put your own name in there, but, but this is how it would be for me. Josh, I am your, and then allow him to fill in that, or complete that sentence. So in light of everything that you've read, everything that you've had a dialogue with God on today, allow him to finish that sentence. Josh, or insert your name, I am your, and then let him finish the sentence, okay? So let me pray. We'll be silent, and then we'll um, allow some time to uh, write that down. So, Father, again, we, we approach you and ask you to speak to us. Thank you for um, bringing revelation and bringing truth through, through your word. Thank you for helping us see our life and where we're at right now. And right now, as we're quiet in your presence, we fix our eyes on you and invite you to complete that sentence for us today so that we can carry that with confidence and hold on to that throughout our day. So right now, as we're quiet, just speak to us. Our ears are open. We invite you to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and take a few seconds and, and write that statement down. <clears throat> what we're going to do next is... Um, just want to invite one person at a time. We're just going to share. Everybody's going to share one person at a time. And once everybody's done, we'll leave. Does that sound good? Okay. We're going to have a couple of us 
up here share what God spoke. And then just so that y'all do know and that you're prepared, um, after a few of us share, I'm going to turn it over to y'all. And um, whoever you're sitting next to, if you're sitting by yourself, kind of scooch over to somebody else and just uh, share what it is that God spoke. So don't let your mind be reeling of like, oh my gosh, I have to talk. Don't, don't like worry. It's just, it's okay. We're in God's house. It's all good. Um, Micah, would you mind sharing with us what it is that God spoke to you uh, through the reading this morning? Um, what had stood out was the question and it being repeated twice, what are you doing here, Elijah? Uh, just being aware of everything that Elijah just walked through and the way that the Lord provided the fire for the altar um, and the favor that he displays towards Elijah, but even the favor and knowing that Elijah's still alive, even though literally death is chasing after him. Um, Elijah still kind of struggles to see the might and power of the Lord. Uh, I guess for me, in just a practical sense, if, if it were to ever be financial or healing in some way that it's like I want to grow in these areas and lean on the Lord, but sometimes, you know, like this year, feeling like, you know, Jessica and I, we feel as if a word for us this year is the word fruition. Um, and a part of that, wanting the Lord to use us in a generous way, but I can't help but still fight the urge to want to be tight-fisted with funds, or we, I'm expectantly but nervously awaiting healing, and so how do I, I need to be better proactive in that. Um, yeah. But seeing all of this, that despite the Lord's might and power, Elijah still seems as if he has concerns, um, but the way the Lord's communicating to him, I feel like it really just displays his affections towards Elijah, not a, what are you doing? Right. But in that gentleness, that whisper, just affirming his affections for him to say, mm. hey, what are you doing? Mm. You know, how how can I help? What, yeah. what do you need from me? Um, and just knowing that even though I feel like I'm still growing, similar to Elijah in this trust, mm. that um, the Lord does everything for me and communicates to me out of love for me. Yeah. So. I think that somebody in here this morning needs to hear that, the, the tone of those questions, because um, that, that just really struck me that there's, there's somebody in here this morning that is convinced that God is of the posture and the tone. What, what are you doing here? And uh, that's, that's not him at all. Um, it's, it could be reminding you what are you what are you doing here what are you about what is this moment about or it's one of compassion what are you, what are you doing here you know you know where you need to be so it, anyhow the the tone of that question somebody needs to hear that this morning uh, miss cal would you mind sharing with us this morning what what it is that god spoke to you well the um the words that uh, spoke to me were the gentle whisper. And uh, I have a tendency um, not to be still too much. <laughs> and uh, and it, it did say in the word that that's when uh, Elijah uh, heard the voice of God when in a gentle whisper. And a lot of times I'm thinking, well, that's, that's me because I don't hear God speaking because I'm too busy, I'm too loud or whatever. And um, so, um, and then the thought that came to me um, when God told Elijah to go to the mountaintop, I thought, well, th that's why the Lord sent him there, you know. And I'm thinking of, um, you know, it said, you know, the earthquake and the fire <laughs> and all that. I know this is probably silly to think about it that way, but I'm thinking, um, well, God wasn't in the wind and he wasn't in the earthquake, and I'm thinking, well, a lot of the things that I do and a lot of the places I go, maybe God wasn't really in that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he took me there so he can ask me, what am I doing here? And um, so um, I think an, uh, there's another word that uh, Pastor Joshua alluded to that. It says, 
don't just be informed, but be transformed, and that's what he wants to do in our lives. But sometimes we can't be transformed because <laughs> we were not listening for that whisper mm -hmm. from the Lord. So right. that's what I got out of it. We're, n we're not transformed because we're making too many earthquakes of our own and too much wind of our own. We're oh, that's too windy up in here. That's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> well, that's not what I was saying. You, you could say that of yourself, but I won't. <laughs> it's easier if it comes from me. That's right. I know how Greek women are. <laughs> Very passionate. Well, the, the, the phrase that stood out to me is, is really strange because um, I thought I would just be, it'd be a given, like I would land on the, the still whisper, but it was, it was the two words, that food. And um, I am passionate about food. Um, I, li I like to eat it, and uh, I, th I just find it interesting that it was uh, bread that was baked over hot rocks, that he ate that twice, and it was that food, this miraculous provision of food that gave him the strength for a 40-day walk. And, um, and I couldn't help but think when Jesus said of himself, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes after me will never be hungry again. And, um, and, and really just a, an understanding of what he's, uh, I guess, asking of me as far as it comes to food and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tuesday is going to be really tough because uh, Kudrowski's is unrolling their punchki, and <laughs> it's a good one this year, but, but just the, the reminder of letting my nourishment and letting my sustenance come from him, and, um, and not the other stuff that's so easily accessible, and so that was the word that he came to me, and there's, there's action for me, it's that I need to do, but um, that, that's really what stood out to me. It was, it was that food, not just any food, but that food. And so I, I know I need to be feeding on Christ more often. So what I want to do now is uh, we're, we're going to have our own home setting here and just kind of talk with each other here. Y'all have a much larger living room there, but uh, I wanna, uh, we're going to take the next uh, few minutes and just share with the, uh, who you're sitting next to and just... Um, Talk about what God spoke to you this morning, and then we'll come back together, okay? Have at it. Right. Is it this? 
Spirit. I guess we got another hour and a half, eh? <laughs> the clock usually goes negative, but it's it started over again. Anyway, yeah, I I I I really didn't dig deep enough to find a, a new piece, but um, I know I'm a Type A personality, and I I, I get in God's way a lot of times with a lot of things, you know. Just my personality type puts me in. All right, we're going to bring it, bring it back in. Was this good this morning? Did God speak to anybody this morning? Amen? Don't be convinced that God does Don't be convinced of the, the lie that God isn't speaking. It's, it's not true. God speaks. He speaks through His Word. He speaks uh, by the power of His Holy Spirit. Um, and this was good today. And um, what we just went through, again, this is the Lexio Divina devotional uh, structure. And it's all about the, the slowing down, going over a small portion of Scripture, letting it speak to you, you having an honest assessment and an honest conversation about where you're at in life, the different realities going on, and allowing the kindness, the gentleness, the strength, the compassion of God to, to speak. And so, guys, thank you so much for, for being up here with me. I'll let you guys hop on down here. On the connection card this morning, we, we still have the connection card, so you're not done writing, okay? But um, we want to invite you to, to answer the question, what did God speak to you today? And even as you're writing that, that might be an anomaly to you where you're like, oh my gosh, he spoke to me today. I'm, I'm writing this down. He spoke to me. Um, I don't want this church to be a body of believers that's dependent upon 
a man's voice. I, whoever teaches up here, I commit, you, I commit to you this, that what is spoken of is, is well studied. It's, it's going to be carefully uh, studied and prayerfully considered. But that's just a portion of what I consider your walk with Christ. Um, so you ought to know that I don't put a whole lot of pressure on myself for your relationship with Christ. I just want to bring a word to encourage you so that you can go out and continue to live the life that you've called to live. Incidentally, that's totally what happens in this story. Elijah, is, he was supposed to go somewhere else, and he ran from it. it totally pulled a Jonah. And the landing spot that he landed in, Mount Horeb, was Mount Sinai. Some pretty significant things happened on that mountain. Lexio, in my mind, is a mobile Mount Sinai where we can stop and, and not pay attention to the noise and the clutter and the, even the wow of a fire and the, the shaking going on, but we, we hear the still small voice. That word, by the way, means he heard God in sheer silence. You can't convince me that silence and solitude is not paramount for our relationship with Christ. It's absolutely needed. We need to meet God on wherever Mount Sinai is for you. I just think Lexio is a mobile Mount Sinai. There are places and people and things that you are supposed to be doing. And you need to meet with your dad in heaven so that he can wrap his arm around you and remind you who you are so that you'll go out and do those things. Y'all, the stakes are too high not to, not to have a close relationship with Christ. If this is what faith is to you, you, your scope is very narrow. Our faith is outside these walls, and it's to be lived out around people that are far from God. Is that like a good sermonette right there? Like that's, that's the why. That's why we are adamant about helping people hear from God through the Word.